hello and welcome back when I first bought the lathe I also treated myself to a four jar chuck and about nine months later on I've now decided I've got a use for it and I've pulled it out and realised I haven't got an half inch allen key to fit it so while, while that's in the post I thought it's a great opportunity to tidy up the old cult chester because it's got quite a, a few issues it's very worn got an amazing amount of backlash there uh, very notchy, especially when I'm trying to get a few thousands, it, it jumps. So that's that's one. So that needs sorting out. And also, I don't know if it's called a jib or a gib. It might be different in whatever country you work from. Oh, there's an incredible amount of movement in there. Ridiculous. So that needs sorting. I don't think one's missing. I think that might be the problem. Or it's cracked or broken. Oh God knows, but we're going to have a look at that anyway. So that's the job, taking that apart. Because, look what turned up in the post today. Mmm, goodies. If you spend six months of your life every night on eBay checking out cultures to lathes, and finally you find the spare parts you're looking for. Let's have a look what we got. Bit of sponge for washing the old van. That's a bonus, isn't it? You can't go wrong with that. That's worth a pound on its own. So they paid for itself, the box. Not. I won't tell you how much it was. It was quite expensive. It was quite upsetting. And after things, I don't even know what they are. This is some kind of selector gearbox selector fork. I'm presuming. No use to me. I probably sell them on. I think. Uh, and various bushes as well. Lots of bushes. I, mean, I don't know how long these things last for. So that's that. But, uh, this looks interesting. I don't know what that's for. No idea. What I bought the box of gubbins for was a new old stock gib strip or jib strip. That's pretty. So I'm happy with that. Hopefully uh, the lathe won't reject it, like you know, like you had an operation and you have a new kidney or something, your body rejects it. It might reject because it's an old and worn out, it might reject it because it's brand new. Hopefully it won't. <laughs> uh, oh yes. A cross slide bolt. Bolt? Nut. Sorry, a cross slide nut. New old stock. Ruiz ends teeth. That's what's needed for the job. So, let's crack on with that. <sighs> Bloody bolt, it was not. Now I'm not 110% sure of what the procedure is, but there is a nut at the end. You can see now, I think I'll have to take that off for starters. I may or may not have to undo that. And there's a couple of Allen cap bolts down there, I'll take them off. And we'll see how we get on. Nine sixteen looks like the job. Right, and the whole thing turns. We do that, so. Oh no, there you go. That's quite loose. Or if it's supposed to be that loose. Fast forward if you want, it's not the most exciting video. That's that off. That's that off. Let me trust the uh, Imperial Clack brand Helen Keys. Quite small, though. Quite small. I can't bloody get it in. That's a design fail, isn't it? So looks like I have to cut them down, which is upsetting. Right, I've chopped that down on grinder. So hopefully it'll do the job now. 
he says. Bet these have not been off for a long time. Oh, loose again. Let's have one like. Yep. That's everything needs a good tighten up anyway. After about two minutes of fapping about, the Allen headed bolts are now being removed. It's all exciting because I don't know what's going to happen next. Oh. Oh. Oh, right. Right. I was expecting the whole thing to come out. Hmm. Hmm. What now? Oh dear. Right, no change. So it must involve taking that off. Oh, I'm about five minutes in now and I'm really scratching my head. It may have something to do with the taper turning attachment that might need disengaging. Because I can just about see it. You can just see it, can't you? That bit of brass peeping out. Well, hey, Chris. How you doing? Well, can't, you can't get to him. So, you've got this dirty big block of metal on the back that the cross slide screw was bolted to. I took the nut off. I think I might have to disengage it. No. It's probably its body. The taper turn attachment. Should just be a matter of sliding that down, really. Is it free? Oh, yes, it's free. I'm free! Well, I'm not and nothing's happening, so that's a good sign. Right, let's have a think about that now. This is quite a long video, so feel free to go and get yourself a cup of tea. I'm sure I'll still be waffling when you get back, no doubt. I think that's it. I think we're cooking the gas. Come on. Oh god, I hope this isn't heavy. A bit more being bloody heavy, wasn't it? Oh, oh there we go. Oh, champion. Look at that. Now, this is what you don't see every day. Let's take the camera off and look at it. Yep, that's confirmed. There is a strip missing. It's happy there's. There doesn't seem to be any damage. And just a simple matter of taking that off and putting a strip on and giving it a damn good clean. Happy days. To the bench we go. Nope. I've got fists to steal. Nope. I've been wanting to do this for bloody ages. Since about five minutes after I bought the lathe, untested and plugged it in. There you go. That's what happens when you don't know what you're buying. Yep, never buy a lathe off the internet, untested, like I did. But luckily we've got the technology. Looks a bit gummed up, that doesn't want to clean it, that doesn't it? It's obviously an oil hole, some description. It's a long time since oil's got through though. Might be a problem, that. Oh, there we go. Look at that, the kip of that. Not good. Oh my goodness. Mm. I could all get cold from my tea in a minute because my hands are really filthy. The thread looks right, doesn't it? Doesn't look too warm, does it?
Well, it might be a little bit thinner than the untouched bit, but you can't expect anything else, can you? Have to wait 50 years of service. This is the bit we're interested in. Yep, it's definitely worn. I think you can really appreciate it really, but trust me it is. Are they the same size? Oh, slightly different. Hmm. So that's not a problem, eh? I'm not putting it on the right way. It doesn't bloody fit. Bugger. Before I had a sweat on, then I thought the guide sold me the wrong part. And about £50 each is not funny. I'd visions it being a metric one, but it turns out it is an Imperial. It's just new. Something I've never experienced before. But at least the bloody thing goes on anyway. I make it easier towards the worn section. It must have been just getting over the uh, the good end. There's no play in that. Oh, it's got a bloody splinter. So that's an easy one. That's just a case of bolting that back up. We'll have a look at the uh, gib strip now. Happy days. Just take it out. Oh! It was supposed to be an easy job to bolt this back on, but it turns out the, it is the original part number, 8167. Duh. I just checked it on the internet, but for some reason it's a little bit proud of the original one. So when I tried it on the lathe, it was hitting. And you can see, there, it hits. So, I've got to mill that down now, which is upsetting. I was hoping it was just a simple job of rebolting. But while I'm, when I'm milling, obviously I don't want to touch the original slideways, do I? So I've had a bit of a brainwave. Now, I'm not a professional engineer. <laughs> I know, I know. But it's true, I'm not a position engineer. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. So. In my way of thinking, uh, hold on to your shoes here, if I set that to that, thus, and lock it off, and then put these under, when I mill this off, I should get the correct height, after I take these out, it will be the correct height, and I won't have damaged that, and I don't want to touch that whatsoever, so that's me thinking, if you know what I mean. So, I'm going to get on with it anyway.